and former Thanks. congressman and January 6th committee advisor Denver Riggleman is here. As I mentioned, he is the author of The Breach, getting a lot of play right now. Um, thanks for being here. Good to see you Great in person. Thank you. Uh, so the committee released a new statement this morning about you, and I'm going to read it for the benefit of our viewers. Sure. In, in his role on the select committee staff, Mr. Riggleman had limited knowledge of the committee's investigation. He departed from the staff in April prior to our hearings and much of our most important investigative work. The select committee is aware of the matters discussed with 60 Minutes. They haven't gone ignored. The committee has aggressively pursued those leads and gathered additional facts, some of which have proved relevant and some of which have not. The committee's investigation continues. So what do you think that means when they say they haven't gone ignored? Uh, I think it means that when you have that much data, I think it's very difficult for them to process all of it. Of course, they haven't gone ignored, but I'll give you an example. So one of the examples when you talk about a White House phone call, they have to go to somebody who actually gives them the numbers. So we know it didn't go ignored, but we know that we couldn't get those White House extension numbers. So all I want to know, who called the rioter? It's pretty simple. Once you do that, here's what happens after that. Right? Do you think the you committee knows who that is? I do not. I don't think that they've gotten. I, I, I do believe that they probably tried to request the White House extension numbers, which I explain in the book and how that works. But I think it's very difficult to get them after you have that lag in data. So, you know, that's one of the things I wanted to talk about in this book is, you know, how do you make data sexy? Right. And uh, I think I did. Um, but I also, you know, when you talk about tiny pieces of data that are absolutely appropriate to go after, you have to have a lot of resources and a lot of counter counterterrorism analysts to do it. And, you know, your network just found something because of that. Let me ask you about the rider and that phone call. Sure. So it's a nine second phone call. Unclear right. if it connected. Any indication that this person that the White House was trying to reach or maybe misdialed, we don't know, um, had any other connection to anybody in the White House? Has, has the, the backstory of this person been filled in? You know, if I can find out, you're talking about the person that was called or the White House call? The person that was called. The person rioter. that was called, the rioter. Yeah, I mean, he's already been charged. The thing is, is what you have to look at is the calls he had before and after, which I don't think have been looked at, right? Which is what where we wanted to go. Because it's almost impossible with the amount of work that the committee had. Um, I think the other thing that you have to look at is what really helps me is at this point, yeah, I care about the phone call that he received. I care more about the person actually making the call because then we can look at their call detail records. So why don't you think the committee, I mean, they have the ability to do that. It takes some time. But why do you think the committee is kind of dismissing this? It, 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 they're making it seem like this lead that you're presenting in this book isn't that big of a deal. I think sometimes when you have seven different um, entities, you know, different teams that are working this problem, six or seven different teams, you have all the, the, the churn of thousands of interviews, millions of lines of data, you know, things can go missed, right? And that's why when you build fusion centers, what I try to t t talk about in the book is that we need to have a new way of looking at this as sort of an information warfare problem and not more of a traditional investigation. And, uh, you know, that's why I got excited yesterday. Um, you know, when somebody's reading the book, like, you know, Ben Collins, and uh, he says, oh my gosh, Kelly Sorrell only had an attempted text. That's two bits of data and a one to two second hit. Those two, and then they call and they're like, oh yeah, I text, oh, we shook the data tree and Andrew Giuliani fell out. So now we have a White House aide who was texting with an Oath Keeper who's been charged with conspiracy. Holy crap. And that's from an attempted text to a landline because she got confused. So those type of mistakes in data are absolutely critical. And that's what I talk about in the book. It's, I want the committee to kick ass tomorrow, right? But you also but, say in the book yeah. that after you saw the hearings begin that you were impressed with the I'm way that they impressed. laid things out. So, so are you still confident that they've been able to pursue these leads or, from what you've seen so far, or do you think the committee is, is wanting in some way? I think when you look at the data, the, the, the committee doesn't have the authorities necessary. That's what I talk about in the book, right? Um, this is not a, uh, this is this is a public trust investigation. This isn't FBI or DOJ, but you can so still get enough So why do you think data. they're upset with you for coming out with us? They didn't read the book. And now when they do, I think I think a lot of this calms down and that's and I've been in politics. Right. And and I and I, and I get it. Right. Because, you know, you, you, you have to drive up pretty quick, quick. Yeah. And uh, these are good people and they've done a great thing for America. So and, and by the way, 
I got 20 years of experience doing this. I'm a former CEO congressman. The committee's not a monolith. Some people like me, maybe they don't. I really don't give a rat. I, what I care about is that the facts get to the American people because the facts belong to Americans. They don't belong to me. They don't belong to the committee. And if there's somebody calling from the White House and the committee has tried to find out and nobody's giving them the data, it's on those sons of guns. And I, they, they, and, and I think that's what I've been trying to say is the committee's trying to do everything they can. This is a different problem set when it gets to data. Though. Do you worry that maybe you're undercutting them because the sense we get from the committee is that that is their worry. They've been so careful and meticulous about what they've laid out. They really want to be bulletproof because of what they're trying to do. They, they are bulletproof because what this book does, and I just, I, I've been smiling about it a lot, <laughs> you know, what this book does, it, it baselines the data and why the committee is on the right track. Um, I've said months ago that we need another year and a year and a half with the millions of lines of data to figure out the command and control and the coordination. You also need, you actually need law enforcement authorities, and, and the committee does doesn't have that, and what they've done. Do you done, think the FBI is doing this? Uh, I don't know. Um, you DOJ know, they, they, is investigating. Well, if they need somebody really good at it, they need to call me. Um, uh, and they, you know, they need to call me now because we have those records. I have the best call detail record team. And look at those secret service. So you tests. haven't got any calls? No, I haven't got any calls from them, but I'm sure they will. And I, can I talk about Roger Stone really quick? Of course. What he just said? Yeah, he's full of crap. Because here's the thing about data. It can't be manipulated or edited. You know, people say it can, and you have all the weird conspiracy theories. Stone's in trouble. And, you know, and every time they open their mouth, they're lying. And the committee knows this. And that's why, because we have the best data teams. I built them. They're still there. And so that's why the committee's on to something here. When you see that video, you match his data. You match the stuff we found. He's in, he's, in, he's in deep kimchi, and that's why you see him screaming, you know, like a baby out there, right? So I, uh, at the end of the book, you talk about Jenny Thomas I and do. the text messages that she um, sent to Mark Meadows. And, and, and they're, um, to put it mildly interesting, uh, she talks about the Biden crime family, as she calls it, <laughs> being arrested as, as she speaks, detained yeah. for ballot fraud, and that they're going to be living in barges off Gitmo for military tribunals. You said you were worried about the violence that's implied there, um, that Trump's allies were in a psychological war, including her. and she implored Meadows to, to get Sidney Powell to help her to release the, the Kraken. So as Ali was saying at the end of that interview that I did with her, they're going to be talking to Jenny Thomas in the next weeks. We'll see if it happens. I think as, as more data comes out, as you see these hearings, I think you're going to see more fear from people. Um, that's what the committee has done, and, and that's why I think they've been effective, is that you create this sort of this tidal wave, this tsunami of fear. We just need more time with more data, and we need more money, and we need more resources. Um, and I think if we can get there, I think we can actually start to engage in this information war in a way that's much better than we've done in the what past. What are the questions to Ginny Thomas? Oh, my goodness, I have so many. I've read those texts probably seven million. You know, when I first saw those texts, you know, it was like somebody stuck a pencil in my eyeball. You well, you know? thought it was a University of Virginia professor <laughs> I did. Point. Well, we did at one point, and, you know, trying to track down those numbers to validate the numbers. You know, we sort of knew, but you've know, you got to validate it to 100 percent. So, you know, the questions I would ask, you know, when you start at the beginning, you know, of some of those text messages that, why are you forwarding a, te forwarding a text from a chief of staff of a congressional member? Are you, are you working with congressional members? You say that you have exact access with Jared. How many the other emails, you know, to the to the Trump family or Trump associates have you made? You know, we know about the emails that are going to other states. Are you following? Oh, oh my goodness, you might be following the Navarro plan, right? The Immaculate Deception. Are you actually following the states of the Immaculate Deception? And that's why you're sending the emails to those specific areas. I have a lot of questions. She's under oath. Ask. Are you going to, you would ask if she's had conversations with her husband about it? Absolutely, I would. Um, and whether she had had conversations with the president of the United States, the former. Um, at the end of the book, you say that there are a lot of accusations of cults for a lot of things, but right. that Donald Trump really is a cult leader. So you're saying that 30 percent of our population is, is in a cult. Yeah, yeah. How do you break them free? I think it's something like this. You know, that's, you know, when I said about data sexy or trying to, you know, write a book that somebody picks up, you know, just in, a, in an airport. Um, we have to we have to change three to five percent of the population and let that metastasize and you know change that in a way where say listen if we're a facts based nation we have a real chance to continue to grow but if we're worried about ap apocalyptic conspiracy theories or grifters or the money that's put behind the, this stuff you're going to see digital profits and I spell that with a ph and an f right you have the profits who you know are telling the future and the money that they're making because of this that those digital profits are really what are destroying this country and the fabric of families and anybody who pushes this q and on nonsense or new world order or anti-semitism or xenophobia or racism they need to absolutely be stopped and the only way to do that is to have our own digital soldiers to be offensive
aggressive and to go after them. Um, that's what this book is about. And once this book is read, if people are expecting something against the committee, you know what? They're, they're smoking some, you know, funky weed because this is actually, no kidding, a baseline of facts and data that supports the way that the committee is going forward. And uh, if people don't like it or they think it's something else, I just, again, like I told you, I just don't give a rat's ass at this point.